When are we going to get a Jello Jiggler game? I mean, I wonder <laughs> if there's been any kind of proprietary like Jello game. I bet there's been like a Flash game. Probably. Uh, but yeah, Jello Jiggler game would be great. Like, I just want Jello Jigglers, honestly. I mean, as someone who has learned about Jello Jigglers for the first time tonight, um, I can neither confirm nor deny of the want of a Jello Jiggler game. I cannot believe you didn't know what they were. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I just like you're not that much younger than me, and like I felt like that was kind of like the thing that people had when we were kiddos but at the same time like we also grew up in different regions and also maybe i just thought jello jigglers were like the coolest <laughs> shit ever and maybe, then like nobody maybe else it's did. one or the other like maybe they were a big thing and maybe i was just the one missing out but also like i said i didn't eat a lot of jello as a kid so mm -hmm. also i would just been like hey let's let's make the jello into funky shapes with these cutters and not call them jello jigglers <laughs> I mean, that's also where you're clearly missing out because I also course. wasn't making Jello eggs either, so maybe I, I was missing out. You were. Jello eggs were great. Like you could just like put the tip of the Jello egg like at your mouth and just like suck the whole thing in. It was crazy. It was awesome. Oh, I, I did it all the time. Well, that's a great way to begin our begin our podcast. Yep. <laughs> Hello, Jello jigglers. Hello, fellow Jello jug jugglers. <laughs> I almost said Jello jugglers. <laughs> Jello jugglers. Da, 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 da. They just juggle Jello eggs. Yeah, that's how that's how it works. Uh, welcome to this week's episode of the Season Language Checkup OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga, and Jello jugglers, as we've basically been talking about. Uh, hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by my my good and best friend, the best Jello juggling not juggling. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Jello <laughs> jiggler person I know. <laughs> Dog Alley and Ladium. Hello. Maybe she does some jello juggling on the side. I don't know. I've never I've... seen it. I've never talked about it before or heard her talk about it before, so I can neither confirm nor deny, but gotta pay off those student loans somehow. <laughs> hey. My uh maybe my my lot in life is juggling the jellos. <laughs> <laughs> we're really off to a great start here today oh yeah, yeah. it's a super great start this is what happens when we record on like a, a different day yep. entirely yep. so we just get weird yep get weird 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 anyways uh we're talking about some games today we are we're talking about a fairly recent game mm -hmm. and then a fairly old game mm -hmm. i guess fair fairly old is that really the term i want to use relatively i don't know it's it's not a new game and it's not a recent game seven whole years it's a lot a lot's changed in my life <laughs> you're not wrong you're not wrong uh but we're gonna talk about some games today we're gonna talk about judgment or mm -hmm. the infinitely better japanese title of judge eyes <laughs> such a better title uh, and then also we will be talking about Virtue's Last Reward, which mm -hmm. we have kind of talked about in the past before. We did a retrospective episode on all three Zero Escape games, but um, we haven't really done like a proper episode about any of those games. So like, you know, we can bend the rules however we want. It is our podcast. We get to do whatever we want. So do you remember what episode number that was? No. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, it it's it's it early. Exists. It's like in the. 20 20 or 30s i would say whoa it was a early 2017 ugh, 2017 podcast why'd you ugh? i hate saying years like that <laughs> improper <laughs> i would not say the year 1917 is the year 1917 so i'm trying to see if i can find it real quick it's it's very early because we that was around the time we were doing a lot of those types of episodes because we did a Persona one we did a Dong and Rampa one, um, and I think a few others but yeah, uh, fairly early on in our in our podcasting years but uh when we were baby whoa we were it was episode sixteen ooh I was I was a bit late there sixteen the sweet wow. sixteen episode wow um so we're gonna kind of 
talk about the story, do like a little speed through of it because I sped through the game, and also we had to fight SharePlay to get through parts of it as well. Because oh, SharePlay is a great feature of the Sony PlayStation Four. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're gonna start off and talk about Judgment. It is mm-hmm. the new game from uh, the Rio Gagotoku Studio, aka the Yakuza Studio. So this is basically the latest in that franchise, except it technically isn't a part of the Yakuza series. Except it takes place in the same area that all those games take place in. (laughs) It's kind of confusing, but at the same time, not so much. Basically, it has nothing to do with a lot of the characters from the Yakuza series. It is its own thing, and... For the most part, like if you have looked at the Yakuza series before and like and thought, man, I those games look cool. Like I want to get into those. And then you see like you know there's seven games they made, and that kind of barrier to entry can be a little daunting at times. Um, this would be the game for you to try out because it's basically, it basically has nothing to do with any of those other ones. And you know you get your own original story here along with a lot of the same mechanics and gameplay that makes up a lot of the different Yakuza games in general. Um, the one big difference with this game is that they've added in new mechanics that are like detective based essentially. So like there's a lot of uh, missions where you're like you're going out and tailing people, you're going around different <laughs> investigative scenes and like trying to find clues and that sort of stuff. So um, it's not just going around talking to people and then beating them up. Um, <sighs> there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, a lot of people have basically described this as like, this is the Yakuza series, but what if we just injected Ace Attorney into it? Which is kind of true. Um, the main protagonist is a former like attorney, but now he's a detective because he basically got out of the the law game. Um, so it, I don't necessarily think it's necessarily like super Ace Attorney, but like it kind of has that same vibe and feel. Um, and especially if you've played those games before, you'll kind of like understand like the the Japanese law system probably a little bit better than if you hadn't. Um, So like essentially if I was kind of like going to break this game down, I would say it's part Yakuza, a little bit Ace Attorney, a little bit LA Noir. Oh, in terms of just like it's that a lot of it is like you being a detective Mm -hmm. Um, part dating sim. What? Yes. What? Uh, And then, I feel like I feel like there was something else I was gonna add in here as well, but I can't remember. Oh yeah, you, there's like four different girls you could date in this game. The one like bad part about that though is that like all the girls you date are like at least ten years younger than you, <laughs> which is kind of iffy. Like like you're in your mid thirties and like all the girls are like in their mid twenties. Mm. So it's like Ooh, that, mm, mm. this could be better. <laughs> this could be better. Um, mm. Oh, I guess, like, the other part would be, like, it's a social simulating game. Because, like, basically they kind of take a lot of, like, the side quests from the Yakuza series and, like, branch that out even further to where, like, you go around and you meet a lot of different people within, like, the town, become friends with them and do missions for them, essentially. So, like, you have, like, this big crew of people that you know. um, And they'll either, like, kind of, like, give you a bonus or anything or something like that. Or some of them, if, like, they're more, like, fighting people, like, they'll come around and if you get into a fight with some random folks on the street they'll just come and hop in and help you out in that fight whenever which is pretty cool um so yeah like i i think they've done like a lot of stuff to kind of like say oh, this you know if you're familiar with the yakuza series this has a lot of the the hallmarks of that but also we are expanding upon a lot of that stuff and kind of branching out from it as well to kind of make it a new experience even if you have that that familiarity with this series um Perhaps, like, the biggest thing that is different between this game and the the rest of the Yakuza series is that um, this is the first game since Yakuza 1 on the PS2 to get an English dub. Uh, Basically, everything past then, past the first Yakuza game on PS2, they decided not to dub and Mm -hmm. just kept the Japanese dub because the English dub of Yakuza 1 was very poorly received. Oh, no. Um, It's a very weird thing. It's a lot of, like here's some Hollywood stars we got for this thing. Like Mark Hamill's in it. And it's very weird. Um, Oh God. And then basically, I think basically for this, they kind of like, they had a clean slate, you know, they didn't have to like recast characters from the original games that might 
feel a little weird because they haven't really they haven't dubbed any of the the latest shakas games at all over here they just brought over the japanese dub um but with this they have kind of a clean slate to kind of just do that and um for the english dub like they do a very very good job um there is like a little bit of a weirdness of like you know watching the cutscenes and seeing like you know obviously the mouth flaps don't match up one to one because they're not going to go back through and redo all the mouth flaps for the english dub at all so like it does feel like you're watching like a dubbed movie oh. essentially so like there is like a little bit weirdness of that but like once you get through the game like it kind of goes away and um a lot of just the the people they get for the the dub itself is are really really good um voice actors like um i'm looking it up right now because i need to remember some names um, like uh, one of the the main detectives you find on the the police force is matt mercer yeah. and he does a fantastic job in this game um uh steve bloom is one of the yakuza folks you know uh, there's a lot of people like you would look at this cast and be like oh i recognize this oh i recognize this uh yuri lowenthal is in this game as the as a character that you defended like three years ago and is like on death row. He does a really good job in this. Um, but yeah, basically like the English dub does a excellent job in this. And um, I haven't really gone through and like looked at scenes with the Japanese dub at all. I'm sure it's, it's also great. Um, I just haven't really had time to go through, go back through and just like watch it with that. But I played through it all with the English dub. Cause I really just wanted to see like, you know how it was since they were, you know, touting that like, Hey, we're going to do an English dub and it's, fantastic um uh some other notable things before we get into like story spoilers and all that sort of stuff uh there's a bunch of sega games you get to play oh there's a few of them that are kind of like returning from previous games like uh via five uh puyo puyo uh space harrier like all of those have been in previous shock of the games that you've been able to play uh, they also brought in uh, Fantasy Zone. Uh, you can play Fighting Vipers, which is pretty cool. And then there's like this weird uh, like Road Rash-esque type game that Sega made called Motor Raid that they also put in. <laughs> and like I had never heard of this game before until like now, until like this game. And it's fairly weird. I was like, oh, they just made Road Rash, but it's just Sega, I guess. I don't know. Uh, that totally works. Uh there's also like a, a light gun game in the arcades as well that is basically based off of the engine that they used when they made uh um the zombie yakuza game for the PS3. What? Yeah, like that's super weird. Like it's all those character models and everything, all that like all those uh backgrounds and everything, it's all ripped from that game. And it's super bizarre that like they put that in here as like a light gun game this time. <laughs> That was very weird. Uh, there's also, like, a weird, like, place you can go and play VR games, which is quote-unquote. But mostly it's, like, you get to play, like, you get to go into, like, virtualized version of Commodore Ocho, and, like, you just play on, like, a like a board game, essentially. It's weird. I did it, like, once, and I was like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> Don't really need to do this again. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff this game, but I think the meat and potatoes of the, of the game is its story which uh, the story is really really good um might be one of like some of the best writing they've done in, in a while which is really saying something like i think yakuza zero was really really good and this might be like on par with that or maybe even maybe even a little better i'd have to like really think about it but uh I guess if if we're going to dive into some spoilers, uh, that that's your spoiler warning, hey, if you want to <laughs> check out, because this game did come out, like, a month ago, so you probably don't want to get too spoilered in this, so, I don't know, like, look, speed, fast forward, and hopefully you catch the Virtuous Us Reward bit if you want to listen to that part, <laughs> <laughs> or else you're going to get some spoilers. Oh, um, no. Them hot, hot spoilers. So the game begins and um, you meet your protagonist. He's a he's a fellow by the name of Takayuki Yagami. He is a former attorney who is now a detective. Um, and you learn that uh, he was basically this hotshot lawyer who got into a law firm and everything. Um, everyone had like high hopes for him essentially because he kind of came from nothing and was kind of was able to go through law school, pass the bar, and everything. Um, and his first real 
uh, case as like a defense attorney is a case about a, a gentleman who is suspected of murdering this old man in a hospital. Um, basically, uh, the dude finds a body in his uh, work truck. He works in the hospital. He's like a janitor, essentially. He, like he does like all the linens and everything like that. He finds his body, uh, goes and buries it in the mountains. Um, Why? We'll get to it. Okay. Um, that wouldn't be my first reaction if I found a body <laughs> in my truck. Like, uh, oh wow, I gotta bury this thing. You know, wow, you just ended up in my truck. That's crazy. <laughs> So he does that and then eventually gets like uh, suspected by the police and everything. They question him and he's like, yeah, this is where the body is and everything. So basically there's like, oh, you're the murderer, clearly. Uh, so Yagami has to defend this dude, um, is able to find like a contradiction within the defense or the, the prosecution's argument and is able to get this dude acquitted. And everyone's like, holy crap, you got this dude, this guy off of a, a death row sentence, essentially. Uh, fast forward like a few months later, uh, and then this dude is accused of killing his girlfriend. So you have to defend him again. This time, you don't do such a good job. He goes to jail for murder and is basically put on death row, essentially. So we are three years past that. Uh, since that murder trial, the second one, essentially, he or Yagami drops out of being an attorney, turns his attention to becoming a lawyer and everything, and that's basically where we are now. Okay. Uh, you're you're not so, making much not, money as a detective. Great. Not great. You're not making much money. Uh, you also have like a a friend that you have help you out with your detective work. His name is Masaharu Kaito. He basically looks like Kiryu, but like a knockoff version of Kiryu from the Yakuza games. And it, it kind of feels like the team was like, we need someone who looks like Kiryu in these games to make you ha have that familiarity that this is a Yakuza <laughs> game. <laughs> um. So one of the first things he does is like tell you like, hey, you, we, we got to find work. Go to the old law office that you used to work at uh, and see if they have any work. Because that's basically kind of how you get a lot of your detective jobs is, you know, you go around to people, you know, uh, like the law office. There's a bar you can go to and they'll have jobs for you. Um, and then you get some other jobs just like going around doing side quests and all sorts of stuff. Um, so you go there and you get a re you you help out one of your old uh the, one of the people you used to work with, uh, a man by the name of Shintani, you, uh, Yagami and Shintani had this very kind of iffy relationship when they were working together. They were kind of like butt heads a lot. So that, that's, that relationship is still kind of there as well. Um, Shintani is basically tasked with a, another murder case, and he has to defend uh, a local Yakuza captain by the name of Kyohei Hamura. Uh, the character of Hamura is actually kind of infamous in this game now because it is the character that they had to halt production of the game in Japan and replace the character because the original dude that they modeled the character after uh, got caught doing cocaine. I mean, he could have been caught doing worse, but, like, I understand that's a big deal. Yeah, it's, it's a big deal in Japan, which I mean, a lot of Western fans were like, well, I don't get it, it's cocaine, that's it. Which, obviously, you know, the... Uh, the use the I guess the idealization of drug usage is a little bit different here in America than it is in Japan. Um, I would just rather the dude be like, "Hey, I did cocaine," than like touching small children or something. Like, totally, yeah. <laughs> some people have done that have been mm -hmm. related to video games and art. Yes. Um. But yeah, that was that was a big thing. Obviously. But yeah, I get I get that it's culturally a thing. So yes. I understand um, that they had to. Do, do their thing. They do their thing. Uh, so you have to go meet him at the police station. Uh, he's already been arrested and is awaiting trial and everything. He is on trial for the murder of another Yakuza by the name of Toshiro Kume, who is like a Yakuza from like a, a different family and a different clan that's, I think, based out of uh, somewhere else, not in Tokyo or anything like that. I think we'll eventually find out or whatever. Um, this dude that was murdered basically was found in a back alley with his eyes gouged out. Ah! Um, and l lately there has been a string of murders of local Yakuza from the specific clan that have been found in back alleys with their eyes gouged out. Uh, Kume is the third person to that they have found with that. And they have evidence suggesting that Hamura was one that did it because basically they were both seen entering into this club Hamura is seen leaving the club without Kume, 
and then Kume is eventually found in a back alley later with his eyes gouged out. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you learn all about that. You learn about the prosecution basically getting their murder charge ready for Hamra when you get a when you see uh this former fling of yours from three years ago. Uh, her name is Mafuyu Fuji. Uh, basically you two kind of dated before and now it's not necessarily the thing anymore three years later but she's still a prosecutor and obviously you know there's the taboo of oh you can't be a have a defense attorney date a prosecutor what <laughs> nothing tell, like that tell that to tumblr yeah uh also this game shows off that prosecutors have badges too like defense attorneys and where the f has that been in ace attorney all this time <laughs> they have cool f badges the the prosecutor has a badge in ace attorney does they? Do they? Does yeah. they? Do they? Are you Does sure? they? Do they? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I can show you a picture of one. Maybe I've just been missing it this whole time. I just wanted everyone to just like show their badges to everyone. Like you, you just show your badge and like, oh, well, here's my badge. Yeah. Um. Because remember in the um. In the one part where you play as um, Edgeworth in the third one. He's well, like, that's because you're given the the defense attorney badge. I know, but he he says like, "Hey, I could I could show mine I, or something about like I I would show mine off or something." But they I need don't to show those like off him. in in the game though. I feel like they don't show those off in the game enough. If they do, uh, yeah, that's totally it. Yeah, that's that's the prosecutor badge. Uh, anyways, uh, you you have to get all set up for for court and everything. Um. Basically, this also involves you going around and seeing, like, like what this other uh, Yakuza clan's been up to and everything. Uh, you go over to uh, the uh, the clan that Hamura is involved with, the Matsugane clan. Uh, Yagami knows the patriarch of the Matsugane clan. Basically, this dude kind of raised Yagami, like, took him from uh, being parentless and just kind of, like, raised him because he was just out in the streets just being a ruffian. Um the reason he was kind of like out in the streets and everything is because like when he was like 15, uh, his father was a defense attorney himself. Um, his father got like a, a non guilty verdict and the, uh, the, the people that were victimized by the person that got the non guilty verdict, uh, murdered his parents. And there's a very graphic scene where like you see young Yagami walking into his house and like, his parents are just like strewn across the entryway, and blood is just everywhere. Ah. It's real rough. Ah. I don't like that. Uh, but basically, you go around and you have to find evidence to, to dispute that Hamura was the one who murdered this dude. Eventually, you go to trial and everything. You help uh, Shintane with the the case and everything, and you're able to get him acquitted. That's just the first chapter of the game. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, this game, I will say, I think this game took me like 40 plus hours to beat. It's it is like a lengthy up, game. like RPG. Yeah, it's lengthy. Uh, so you get Hamura, his, his acquittal and everything, but Yagami is convinced that Hamura had something to do with it and was hiding something from the defensive team. Um, so he... He basically comes up with his identity of there is a mole, quote unquote, who is doing the actual killings, who has been doing these uh, eye gouging killings, let's say. Uh, so he thinks there is this person called the mole who's doing this and everything. Um, and he goes around to the basically the, the sites where they found the first two bodies and tries to find if there is anything around there or anything. Um, if there's any evidence left around and if they can kind of figure out if there is actually something to this case and anything um along the way you do a bunch of side off side missions and everything you you race some drones there's drone racing in this game what yeah you race drones gotta do some drone racing <sighs> um you get beat up because that's the thing uh, what else happens? Uh, Hamra, like, gets on you because he thinks that you're investigating too much and you shouldn't be investigating. When, <laughs> clearly, I got an acquittal. Everything's fine. Hey, hey, don't get, stop going, moving into this. That's really bad. You should not do that. That's real good. Just, just, just knock it off, kid. Um, Hamra basically then takes it a step further and, is, like, basically threatens to murder you in a back alley. 
like almost kind of like he's trying to like fake that he is this like actual the actual killer uh you get saved by this dude in like a, a faux guy fox mask oh my who god who they they basically um they mentioned this early on in like the first chapter like there's these this group of kids that are going around in masks and like robbing like they're doing all these robberies and everything um and this dude is basically supposedly the leader of that um but he he saves your hide gets you out of there while you've been had the crap kicked out of you um and gets you to a safe place and everything um so all that goes down that's a lot that's a lot uh basically after that yagami like goes and calls kaito and makes sure he's he's safe like he because he thinks he's going to be targeted next um you meet up with another member of the matsugane family his name is higashi he's basically another dude like you knew when when you were younger as well um and he's basically like hey you should also stop this like you don't want to get involved in this you don't want to make hamura mad and it's like well about that um Yagami and Kaito basically think that like Higashi's like changed and they're trying to figure out like what's different about him but they like so they, they tail him to his uh to an arcade he runs which is just a Yakuza front um and they basically like go down there and question him like why are you so different and all this sort of stuff um they learn about what happened a few years prior that that was the reason like Kaito gets kicked out of the Matsugane family uh which was basically this whole thing of like a hundred million yen got robbed from the the Matsugane family and Kaito was like the one there and was supposedly responsible for it and everything um he was basically going to have have to chop his pinky off because you know that's a thing uh, um no because Hamura was like basically was forcing him into it and then uh patriarch matsugani is like no nah, you're just you're you're a civilian now you don't have to do this get out of here you're just kicked out <laughs> skedaddle kiddo skedaddle uh yagami gets approached by some people from the robbery ring and then attempts to finding the the one guy who saved you um you eventually find him and realize that like he has left this this other left the the rest of them because like they had basically just turned to robbing for the sake of robbing and he was kind of like trying to be this robin hood figure essentially and like robbery with like ideals and all that sort of stuff and he's like well they're doing all this stuff now i'm not going to be associated with it and all that um but he becomes like a um an ally for you now so you have a a little group with you oh god oh, no i dropped things i'm sorry oh no oh no that is not good everything's chaos <laughs> Bad things are happening. Um, so you move on, and then you're gonna go meet with Higashi again. Um, you realize that like there's basically a, everything's gone and gone into chaos because there was a shooting. Um, one of the members from the other clan that got has had all the murders. They are the the Kyore clan. Um, one of the members of the Kyori clan has come to where the Matsugane clan is and just straight up like murders a dude in front of their headquarters. He thought he thought the dude he was murdering was Hamura, but it was just another dude who was dressed similarly to him. Oh but no. Dude just gets straight up murdered. Oh no. So a lot of things are bad things are just happening. Yikes. That's really um, not good. No. That poor innocent person just died. <laughs> so Hamura kind of goes into hiding and everything. Um, Yagami has a, a talk with Shintani, and Shintani basically tells him to also back off. That the mole is is way above your league and everything. So he kind of like lets loose that he knows who the mole is, oh. and that's not good. Um. So you also have to kind of like go around and try and find if you can find evidence of the whole robbery thing. You're also trying to find stuff about the mole. Also find out like what Shintani has been into. Um, so you're going around doing all these like different missions to get you all that sort of stuff. Big meows. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. Uh, 
you learn that uh, the Kyore clan has this uh, this business called KJR, which is kind of like their their front that they're spilling money into, and like kind of like the backstory behind that. Um, eventually, you kind of go back to your your office. You get a call from uh, this character whose name is Sowery. She works at the law office. She used to work at as well. She tells you that Shintani hasn't been answering calls or anything. He, they don't know where he is, and he's like, "All right, I'll I'll go find him." I'll try and figure that out. He goes, so he's going to go leave. He hears a vibrating sound in his, uh, like, in his, like, I don't know, what do you call it, like a dresser closet type thing? An armoire? An armoire. Yeah. So he's just vibrating from it, and he's like, opens it up, and he's very curious. And, oh, hey, it's Shintani's body with his eyes gouged out in his closet. Ah! Oh, no. And it just falls out. No, no, he's like, no. Uh oh. No, no, no. <laughs> this is bad. I don't like that. Uh, so he calls Sauri back and he's like, hey, I kind of found him. Uh-oh. Um, you have to take the time also as well to investigate his body and try and figure out, like, okay, what happened? Why was he murdered? Um, what was what was going on? You you get a look at his phone, and you see he had made a, a phone call to a strange strange, pl- a strange place. Um, that's about all you're able to do as the police show up pretty quickly. Um, this is where you meet... Uh, you know, I don't think you necessarily meet him, but you really get acquainted with Detective Kur- Kuroiwa. This is Matt Mercer, by the way. <gasps> uh, he's the big honcho detective of the police force who you basically embarrass because you helped Shintani get that murder acquittal on Hamura, and he's not too happy with you. Uh, so you go to the law office to talk about what happened to Shintani. Um, the head of the law office basically... Uh, it's like, hey, if you want to stay here for the night since your office is kind of a crime scene, you totally can. It's all good. All that sort of stuff. Um, but you learn that the the place that he had called before he died is uh, this this big hospital um, and is a specific ward in the hospital called the ADDC, the Advanced Drug Development Center. And it's very obvi- like odd and doesn't make any sense. Also, it's connected to the murder three years ago. So this is where you get a lot of backstory about that because uh, the next day Yagami takes uh, one of like the junior members of the law office. His name is Hoshino, or not Hoshino, someone else. Uh, but you take him, <laughs> and that guy. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you basically go and uh, scope things out. Essentially, at the ADDC, you get a lot of backstory. Like the, when you were first here originally with Shintani three years ago, questioning about the murder that took place here. So you get a lot of the backstory that happened there. Um, you learn about uh, uh, Okubo, who was the uh, the person accused of murdering this old man that you learned about the old man whose name is Waku. He was a, an old, old man who was in the, the hospital because he had dementia uh, and Alzheimer's. Um, that's why he was there. Um, and you also learn about um, uh, Terasawa, who was basically this nurse who like led you around and then eventually becomes Okobo's girlfriend later on. And she is the one who gets mur- supposedly murdered by him. Uh, a few months after the first murder acquittal. So you get all that sort of stuff, all that backstory. Um, and it basically takes you through the trial to uh, the trial three years ago to show like, okay, here's how, uh, um, Yagami was able to upend the prosecution's defense. And he's basically like, um, this, the, the key witness that the prosecution have has is the, is Dr. Shono. He is, uh, basically this head researcher in the ADDC and he said like oh I saw uh, Waku in his in his in his room in his bed that's how I knew it was him that's how I know he was dead and then Yagami is able to basically be like when you look through like the window of his door there's like a like a shelving unit by his bed you can't see his face when you're looking through there you would just see like his torso and legs you could not prove that that was him in that bed at that time you don't know if that was him or anything um, hmm. That's basically the key thing that kind of gets the the acquittal the first time. Hmm. Hmm. Big hums. I'm just going to continue on. Uh, continue after that... on. Did you want more hums for me? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, uh, I thought you wanted more hums. <laughs> I can I can give you more hmm. No, you're good, hmm? buddy. Hmm? Uh, Kurorwa basically threatens Yagami by being like, "Hey, you want you have to come down and give us give us an interview." 
And Yaga was like, are you, do you have a warrant or anything? And Kuro was like, no, but I can go get one if I need to. Like, we would like it if you would come willingly, but if you won't, we will make you come. Um, so all that happens. Uh, Yagami's also, like, interviewing the head of the ADDC, a man by the name of Kido, uh, while all this is happening. Um, Kido tells him that he doesn't know why Shintani called the ADDC or anything. He doesn't know why he would call Shono, because that's who the person he actually called was. Um, so they go, so Yagami gets out of that meeting, goes to find Shono, and Shono's like, I don't know. Uh. Also, the Minister of Health comes up. Oh. Um, and shows up as well, and like, he's like, you need to leave. And he's like, oh, fine. Brr, grumble, grumble. Grumble, grumble, grumble. He <laughs> just bonked Max in the head. Oh, no. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> he's like, hello, I'm trying to visit Bonk. Oh, no, I'm still going to try and visit. It's okay, buddy. Um, along the way, you also learn that, like, the, the reason the ADDC is kind of, like, a big deal is that they're developing a drug that's supposed to cure Alzheimer's. It's called 89. It's going to become very prominent as the game goes on. Is it, like, DL6? Yeah, kind of. Let's, let's <laughs> go with that. Uh, you learn about, as well, that, like, there is a group called the Kajahira Group. They are the ones who are basically kind of, like, bankro bankrolling the Kyore clan. Uh, and they also were in talks to take over the land that the ADDC is on. Like, they had the Minister of Health on, like, on board to get it cleared and everything, get that thing shut down, be able to redevelop the land. Then all of a sudden, the news of 89 comes in. Then the ADC ADDC is being pumped full of money. They can't take over this land or anything. Um, so there's a big, like, problem with that. Um, basically, you eventually get, like, called into forcefully called into like a meeting with like the head of the the Kajihara group who is you know bankrolling everything with the Kyori clan and he basically tells you all of this and he also gives you um gives you a a mission to go find and find out why one of his men was murdered and it was like the the assistant uh director of the of the the ministry of health and this dude was like poking around trying to figure out what was happening with you know what how did 89 come to be so quickly and everything and then along the way he gets supposedly beat up after a night out on the town and then three days later he dies from the from the beating from the beating a lot of people just kind of like brushed it off and everything saying like, oh, it was just, you know, an incident, nothing of the ordinary. Uh, Yagami eventually kind of comes to the conclusion that the person that did this made it look like it was a, a really bad beating and was able to kind of like make it so like that happens. And also he would die a few days later. So he thinks that the person that killed uh, this assistant director is also the mole. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Because it had to be someone who was, like, really good at, you know, assassinery and all of this. Assassinery. <laughs> That's how you do it. Being an assassin? Yeah. That's what you call it. Yeah. Being an assassin. So all that happens. Um, and then the, 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 the wiki I was using just ran out of chapters. So we got to go. And, uh, My memory. By memory and also the the base Wikipedia page. Um, so whoever was editing the Wikipedia or the wiki, they just stopped not, halfway through. They didn't finish the game. <laughs> they didn't get that. They stopped halfway through and they're like, "All right, we're good." Um, so you find out all this stuff uh, about the the ex vice director of the ADC. His name was Hashiki. He was the one who's murdered and everything. Um, and you everybody's murdering things. Yeah, uh, Jesus, they need to calm down. Eventually, you are brought into the prosecution's office for an interrogation. Uh, because they, they are trying to pin the murder of Shintani onto you. Whoa! Because he was found in your, in your office. Right. Uh, basically, there's a lot of, like, posturing that happens. You, you realize that they don't have, like, the information that they really need. They also reveal that, hey, we're not actually here to talk about you. We are here to, to divulge uh, information that we are pursuing another avenue, and that is uh, this, this cop uh, whose name is Kazuya Ayabe. Uh, Ayabe is a crooked cop. He has been selling you information on the side here and there about you know various uh, parts of your investigation, like the, the Masagane robbery, 
um, bits and pieces about what they could find about the mole. He's basically been kind of like a, a shadow ally through this. Um, and Ayabe calls Yagami like while they're in that meeting. And he's like, dude, I don't know what the hell is happening. Like they are trying to pin this murder on me. I didn't do it. What do I do? And, and Yagami just sits there and like looks at the prosecution. He's like, oh, hey, we were just talking about you. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> Uh, Yagami also is like, uh, cause Ayabe is like, you need to help me. I, you need to do something to help me. He's like, all right, I'll take your case for you. All the while, like just like staring daggers into the, like the, the prosecution is really good. Um, so like they, they decide like they are going to have, they have evidence that, uh, Ayabe, uh, murdered Shintane because his gun was used. His police his uh, police pistol and all that sort of stuff um and they have they the bullet markings if you remember that from ace attorney the the, mm-hmm. the fingerprints of the gun the, yeah the fingerprints of the gun uh match up to his, the bullets found in shintane match up to his gun um there's a little bit of like weird discrepancy with that because obviously shintane had like his eyes gouged out to make it look like he had been a, a mole murder victim mm-hmm. but also he had been shot so like there's a weird thing about that Hmm. Um, so they, they're trying to figure out, okay, why would this be a thing? Uh, Yagami and Kaito find, eventually find Hamura, who had been in hiding ever since that shooting that happened in front of the Matsugani place. It, they find him in, like, this underground illegal gambling kind of hideout. Um, and basically just have this huge fight there and, like, interrogate him about, like, what he knows about the mole and everything. All this sort of stuff. Um... Yagami comes to the conclusion that the one who has been organizing all the murders and using Hamura and everything is Dr. Shono, the man behind uh, the 89 drug. Mm-hmm. So that ties the, 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 this whole drug to the, the mole murders and everything. At least that's what Yagami is kind of trying to come up with. Um, Yagami also comes up with this theory that Basically, these mole killings are actually forms of human experimentation that they are using to try and get 89 out in the market quicker. And that the murder, quote unquote, that happened three years ago of the old man Waku was the first uh, known implementation of human experimentation used with 89. Oh. Um, so he basically comes up with this conclusion that Okubo didn't kill, obviously, Waku. And also somehow was po- or like was forced into either murdering his girlfriend or they were both basically set up, essentially. He, Yagami basically goes and like tracks down Dr. Shono in the ADDC. Basically kind of forces him to like tell him what happened. Um, he doesn't really necessarily kind of say anything, but he kind of lets slip that he knows a little too much. He knows about the mole because like Yagami kind of is like, hey, what do you know about the mole? Like, I don't know anything about the mole. What are you talking about? Like, oh, you wouldn't know anything about the mole, huh? Um, so all that kind of goes down. And also Yagami kind of comes up with this theory as well that uh, Shono's the one that murdered Okubo's girlfriend and basically made it so that it looked like Okubo was the one killer like, by like injecting alcohol directly into his bloodstream, essentially. Oh, Jesus. Because uh, one of the things was, like, Okubo had been, like, kind of, had been sober for, like, a few years and hadn't drank or anything. And when they find, like, when they go to the murder scene of his girlfriend, he's, like, reeking of alcohol. So people are just like, oh, well, he clearly just started drinking again, and that's what happened. Also, so they also re- reveal, like, later on, the reason he went and buried the body initially um, was because he had a record. Like, he had a, uh, he had been, uh, cited for, uh, like, a battery or an assault or something like that, and he, once he finds the, the body in his truck, he's like, if the cops find this, they're automatically just gonna pin, pin it on me. They're, they're gonna think I did it, did this, so I need to get rid of this. Um, and then, like, later on, once you, we talk to him in, like, in the jail interview room he's like that was a real dumb idea but like i didn't really i wasn't thinking straight and i didn't really have like any other options so i just did that probably not a good idea um so all that goes down uh later on kaito gets taken hostage by hamura which is not good you have to storm through a matsugane hideout and everything 
you find Hamura and Kaito, you beat up Hamura. Um, so does this dude also just like punch random people? Yes. A lot of punching. Nice. Uh, Patriarch Matsugane comes through and helps you out after like basically telling you just to back off the, the investigation and everything and he, that he's not going to help you anymore. Um, all the while that like the Matsugane clan is kind of in shambles because Patriarch Matsugane is like, yeah, no one really listens to me anymore. I can't bring you any money or anything. I'm just kind of here as a placeholder. Hummer is the one bringing in all the money. They're going to listen to him. Like it's all real bad. Uh, so they, they basically, um, they take Hamra to a Kirori clan hideout. That's where they go to interrogate him. And this is where you kind of get like a, the big chunk of like the, the, the reveals and everything. Um, Hamra reveals that he has been working with key members of the ADDC as a human trafficker. He grabs people from the Kyori clan, delivers them to them to do experimentations for 89. He takes the dead bodies, makes it so it looks like a murder. Ah. He gets paid a hefty sum What's for hefty this, sum? like hundreds of millions of yen, like a lot of money. Um, he reveals that the three participants who basically came to him initially was uh, the the um, the Minister of Health, uh, the head of the ADDC Kido, and Doctor Shono. So all three of them were there when the the initial meeting took place of. Hey, we want you to do this. Um, Hamura also is just like, yo, I can't tell you any of this because the mole will come. I know who the mole is. He will come f murder me if I tell you any of this. Uh, they basically are just like, yeah, you're going to come say it and tell us all this. Uh, eventually, the hideout they, they're in starts to like, smell. And they're like, there's this weird smell here. Uh, there's another body. No, there's the, it's on fire. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Um. Basically, a lot of, like, Hamura's folks have come to beat up the Curie clan to try and rescue their, their, their captain and everything. Um, bad things are happening, so you have to fight your way through a bunch of them and everything. Um, basically, you, you keep fighting and fighting, and then you find a bunch of them down in this one area. And, oh, hey, what's up? Here's the, the mole shows up. And he basically, like, weighs lace to a bunch of, bunch of, uh, Matsugane folks, a bunch of Kyore folks, um, and is going to like going to shoot Hamura. Uh, Patriarch Matsugane jumps in front of the, jumps in front of him and takes a bullet from him for him. And was like, no. Uh, Hamura is like actually shows like a bit of humility and is like really sad because like you know obviously yeah because the patriarchs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, when this happens, Hamura reveals who the mole is, and the mole is Detective Kuroa. He has been working with uh, Hamura throughout all of this and is the one who has been basically making it look like all these murders have taken place, taking care of any like assassination work that he needs done. He has been on the books basically with Hamura for a good long while. Wow. Um, so all that goes down. It's, it's real messed up. Uh, a little bit after the fact, you you try and find like definitive evidence of like where they've been doing all the human experimentation stuff at because they're not doing it at the ADDC. They're doing it at, like this off site off site location. Uh, you find that you storm through it and you're like, all right, we're about to blow the lid off this case. We have we have the definitive evidence right here. Like, there's clearly going to be DNA of these murder victims in this room. Doctor Shono's here. He's basically going to admit to it. Um, the one dude, uh, the dude with, like, the, the faux guy fox mask, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he's been kind of with you throughout this entire thing, helping you here and there. He's, like, he's going through this this entire, like, building with you, like, backing you up throughout all this. Uh, and you're about to, like, uh, accost Shono and make him confess and everything. He basically, uh, this dude pulls out a knife and is like, I'm going to go f murder him. And everyone's like, you know, everyone's like, whoa, what do you mean? <laughs> Uh, he reveals he is the brother of of uh, Okubo's girlfriend. Oh. And had kept it secret this entire time. Jeez. And was trying to find the person who, like, legit did it. And, like, that's why he kind of seeks out Yagami and all this. So he's, he's like, ready to, to murder Shono. Conveniently, here's the police. <laughs> ah. uh, and also the prosecution. And Yagami's like, all right, cool. We have all this evidence here. Like, clearly, 
we have a case. They're like, yeah, about that. Uh, nothing happened here. We're not going to look into this. Um, you find out that the head of the prosecution has been taking shush money from the Ministry of Health. <sighs> and the prosecution's not going to help you. They're just going to be like, well, th nothing happened here. We can't do anything. Um, so this leads into you basically going to like, un like a, another, like kind of lower member of the, of the prosecution. Um, basically him and, uh, Mafayou help you out. Uh, Mafayou is basically real, real big into like making sure like you actually find justice and all this and everything. Uh, she's supposed to meet up with like her, her, her coworker who's, who's the guy you basically beat, three years ago in the the original Okobo murder case and like that you two don't really like each other um but you go and meet up with him and are like you realize like your bosses are on the take right like this is not gonna end well if we don't actually do something about this uh so we go full like ace attorney where the prosecution's helping the defense <laughs> nice um uh so you basically have to find uh definitive evidence to prove exactly what happened who the mole is what 89 has to do with all those other murders and everything mind you this is all for the murder of shintane and you have to defend that ayabe wasn't the one who murdered him so their plan is is like they're going to bring in the the, the minister of health get him on the stand to talk quote unquote talk about 89 talk about what it is why shintane would have called the addc um, this is you and the prosecution kind of like helping this. Like the prosecution has to bring him in, obviously, to to be a witness and everything. And they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna. This is what we're gonna do and everything, all that sort of stuff." Uh, before you go to trial and everything, you you're chasing down someone who looks like the mole who shows up, and you chase him up to like the roof of the the batting cages, and they unhood, but it cuts out, and then you move into the trial. Uh, basically at the trial, you get the, the minister of health on the stand and everything and kind of, it kind of goes through the motions and then it's just you and the prosecution, like just tag teaming, giving him questions about like, okay, would you say 89 has led to human experimentation and all this sort of stuff? Which, look at this article that, that mentions Dr. Shoto has been doing human experimentation on people and that's why 89 is the way it is. 89 murders people. Yay. <laughs> and he's like, what's the meaning of this? Why is the prosecution not stopping this and, and just like the prosecutor's like you know i just wanted to come by and watch a good show it's fine <laughs> uh like mafia comes in like later on and is like because he because he keeps mentioning like where's the head of the prosecution i want him blah 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 and she's like oh by the way he's been taken by the police but for bribery and all this sort of stuff he is not going to be coming in anytime soon <laughs> so this guy is just like F uh but while the trial's happening, he's able to, like, look back to, like, one of, like, his people and, like, make motion to them. And this dude, like, runs out of the courtroom. So, like, you you and Kaito have to, like, run after him. <laughs> and, like, you're the one leading the defense. And you're like, hey, junior member, you're, you're in charge now. <laughs> Bye. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, so you, like, so you run after him and um, you're able to tackle him, but before he gets tackled, he makes a phone call and he basically has his goons try and find Kuroiwa and murder him. And you need Kuroiwa alive in order to like really like pin down all of this case because he obviously he's the mole and everything. Um, so you go, you have to follow him, and he like he's about to get like jumped, and like he turns around and just straight up murders all these folks. <laughs> Jesus! Just shoots them right in like daylight in like a, in in the in the street. Uh, he runs off and he heads to the ADDC, um, and he's gonna go kill Shono, and really like just finish this whole thing. You have to like run through the ADDC and find him. You take like a bump to your head because you fall off of like a an a like an air bridge essentially, not an air bridge, but like a kind of like a glass bridge that connects two buildings because Kuroiwa just blows it up, <laughs> and you fall down and, like hit your head on like a car that's driving by. And you get, like, real wonky, like, concussion syndromes, essentially. Uh, and then you start seeing ghosts. Um. It's real weird. But eventually you find uh, Kuroiwa, Kuroiwa, and you have to fight him. Make sure he doesn't kill Shono. He also, like, when you're fighting him and all this sort of stuff, he, like, he gets real wobbly. But uh, he pulls out this, like, syringe at one point, 
and uh oh no he doesn't shono comes out and it's just like you know you can't kill him and everything he pulls out like a syringe and it's full of 89 like the latest version of it and he's like this is the 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 clear the perfection that i've been working all my life towards this is going to save all of humanity save everyone with this this terrible disease injects himself with 89 directly um and basically everything goes bad for him like his eyes turn blue Ugh. like his eyes turn black and blue like the iris like the, the whites of his eyes turn black and then like his irises turn blue and he just like goes all like blah, 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 and dies um that becomes another key bit of information because if you remember all the bull murders have had their eyes gouged out that was a way for them to hide that it was 89 because if they had that it would show oh obviously their eyes are turning all messed up why is that so if they don't have any eyes they don't have to no one will be none the wiser hmm so there you go um Karoiwa tries to basically mess you up and fight you some more um he's he's basically a he's gonna do something like lethal to to you but the rest of the police show up and just straight up shoot the hell out of him and really murder him really murder because he had brought the police with him as like his goons but like uh uh kaito and some of your other buddies have beat up the police enough they're like hey you should probably put a stop to this dude if he does anything bad so like he's like Koro is about to do something real messed up and then he the police just like lay into him so Koro dies regardless but you still have enough of the information and everything to 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 come back to the the courtroom, get the uh, the innocent or not guilty verdict for Ayabe, and then they are also able to retry Okubo's case and get him a non guilty verdict because he's on death row and about to like get sentenced to death row to to die and everything. So they're able to get him his freedom because he obviously didn't do either of the two murders. So he's able to get set free. Ayabe is able to get set free, and that's how the game ends. Um, and then basically like the, the kind of like the end scene is, is everyone being like, Yagami, why don't you come back being a, an attorney again? He's like, nah, I don't want to <laughs> do that. Did you see, I had to wear a suit. That's terrible. Why would I want to do that? I'm just going to be a detective. And then they get a phone call and then like the investigation is them finding a cat. And then like the credit scene is like them running around trying to find this cat. This cat like kind of maneuvers through all these different <laughs> places and then just like goes into like the, the office and like roams around it. <laughs> while they're like asleep Amazing. it's really good uh this game's really good it's really like just a lot of fun i think the writing is just fantastic it's a really really fun story throughout with a lot of different twists and turns that really just kind of surprise you here and there and i had a blast going through like i like once i got it like i could not put it down yeah you played it a lot mm-hmm it's really good. And I think as well, like I said uh, very early on, that like, you know, if, you, if you've been wanting to try out the Yakuza series at all, like, this is probably the game to check out because, you know, it still has a lot of that same styling and trappings that those games have, but you're not weighed down by, like, this whole giant story that is, like, waiting in front of you where, you know, it's kind of hard to even play all of the games as they are right now. So... If you want just like a good break from that and just, you know, something that's on its own, like this is it. And it's really, really good. Really good. So, yeah, that's that's judgment. We have laid our judgment on that. Let's talk briefly about Virtue's Last Reward. Mm-hmm. The second Zero Escape game. Yes. Um, we basically played through this very quickly. Or I, I played through you watched. Mm-hmm. Um which is basically just me skipping through a lot of text and just getting to like the end story bits. Um, Cause we've been watching fangirl stream it. And that was basically me like, I really want to see a lot of the endings of this game again. So yep. let's, let's, let's try and get through this really fast. That still took me like the end time on that was 20 hours, but I think a lot of that, like maybe like four or five was like just sitting and waiting for share play. <laughs> yeah. It sucked. That was the kind of the one detriment. It sucked so bad. Yeah. Um I will say that like kind of going back and replaying this is that there's a lot of points where you're kind of just going through the same information over and over again and a lot of that time is kind of just like you can't skip it for whatever reason, mm-hmm. which is, isn't great. Um 
and I feel like that could easily be rectified by allowing you to kind of move through that a lot quicker. Um, and there's just a lot of that, like, um, the flow to getting towards like an actual ending at first is takes you a while, but like, I feel like once you kind of get to that first ending, you're going to start like popping things off, pop, 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 right and left. So like once you kind of get there, it's going to, that's when things kind of start tumbling forward. But the, the, the path to getting there can be kind of arduous at times. Yeah. And can definitely like feel like you just kind of beating your head against the wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so where should we begin with this? Uh, the fact that I decided I was going to Google about Sigma and I found out that apparently it is considered canon that he has like an 18 inch dong. <laughs> what a way to start off. I just like, um... The the fact that he found it necessary to tweet that he's like, you know, Sigma says that he's 12 inches, but he's actually only nine, but that doubles when he's excited. And I'm like, why are you tweeting this? <laughs> it's like... That's Uchikoshi. Right. Like, certain details he should just keep to himself. Like, the fact that he thinks that... Um, like Junpei went to college for like to study Bitcoin. I'm like, why are you like this? <laughs> Please just stop talking. <laughs> or uh, that like Light and Clover just like their household doesn't wear underwear. Sure. No, he said that. I know. That's why I'm saying sure. Like, why are you like this? Anyway, that's where we're starting. Yeah. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, totally. Uh, this game takes place a year after 999 and all that. Uh, it is a visually different looking game because, you know, they, they replaced the uh, the 2D uh, visual novel-esque style that, you know, kind of is very prominent in these sorts of games. And, uh, Wait, made it's not a year after 999. Is it? I thought it was a year after 999. No. What what time frame then? Because like, I'm pretty sure I've heard them say a year after the events of 999 multiple times in that game. Yeah, that was what happened. Zero Time Dilemma is a year after 999. No. Yeah. Zero Time Dilemma takes place like six days after this game. After Virtue's Last Reward. Yes. No, it doesn't. It, it yes. Just... Okay, no, 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 no. So there's time travel shenanigans. Yes, there are. So Zero Time Dilemma is a year after 999. No. Yes, because he's been looking for her that whole time, and now he's like the hardened detective guy, and then now he's, he's spoiler alert, an old man. Let's, get, let's go into the Zero Escape timeline. Which, oh god, I forgot it starts way back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it starts in like the 1800s. Oh good, 2020, Sigma found a dead frog. <laughs> Why? Alright, November 1st, 2027, the events of Zero Escape, Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, the second nonary game. Mm -hmm. December 25th, 2028, in California, Sigma is knocked out by a soap roll. Uh, all, uh, was I wrong? No, I wasn't wrong. No. I mean, technically, yes, I'm wrong. But in the context of when they first show up, they think it is a year after they 999. Think, they think it is. That, yes. That's what I was inferring. Okay. That, yes. Their alleged thoughts of when it takes place is a year after 999. Okay, that, that I'll accept that phrasing. When it actually takes place, not not a year after. Nope. Nope. <laughs> But you're right, ZTD does take place a, a year after. Mm -hmm. well, we for sure. Harden Junpei. Mm -hmm. So yes, you are correct. We were both correct, but we just were not understanding each other. Right. Because <laughs> we are we are smart. <laughs> also, it's late. <laughs> that too. Um, so yeah, uh, like I said, they, they do a, a different uh, visual style for this game where all of the models are 3D. Mm -hmm. um, 
which is you know very different for a japanese adventure game because a lot of them just you know kind of stick with the 2d anime styling Mm -hmm. so um this really changes it up and i think kind of is is very interesting because you don't really see that happen that often and obviously zero time dilemma takes it even a step further from this right and goes fully into that but um i think it's a cool change because you don't really see a lot of a lot of these types of games really go in that direction yeah, it was it was really really experimental and different for the mm-hmm. time, and so that was pretty cool. Like you you very rarely see like adventure visual novel type games that have that. I right. was impressed. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna kind of speed through this and everything. Hey, you do a lot of puzzles. A lot of puzzles. You're trapped in a in a in a facility. Mm-hmm. You got to play some games. You gotta play the nonary game. The nonary game. The A B the Ambidex edition. <laughs> you're you've been abducted by Zero uh, the Third. Yep. Who's a rabbit? Mm-hmm. Who shows up on a, a video screen a lot? Siggy. Fido. Fido. What's up? <laughs> One of the best lines in the God. entire. Game. Zero the Third is good. I love Zero the Third. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, you're also trapped with a bunch of like eight other people. Obviously, you're trapped. You are Sigma. You play Sigma. You're trapped with uh, Phi, who is kind of your partner throughout most of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have Dio. He's, he wears a top hat and he curses a lot. He uh, curses a lot. He's apparently um, he he says that he is a ring leader for a circus. Not true. Ring master, I think, is the word I'm looking for. Ring leader. Ring leader. That is actually more accurate for his real job. Yes. Uh, you have Ten Miyoji, who's an old man. Mm-hmm. Pork, who's a little kid with missiles on the side of his head. Uh, um, it's it's a snack container, and they also know each other. It's missiles. Uh, Clover, who's returning from nine nine nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alice with, with less clothing, who is also returning from nine nine nine. Technically, yes. Uh, Luna, who is a, a good bean. The bestest. Uh, and Kay, who is a robot. a robot. Not really a robot, but he he looks like a robot. He's a robot. Uh, and basically, you have to play the AB game where you have to vote to ally or betray with someone and get enough points where if you get nine points, you're able to go through the number nine door and escape. Mm-hmm. If you get below zero points, you die. Yes. You are injected with uh, the sleeping medication and then like a different medication that starts like stops your heart. True that. Um, so you go through a bunch of different uh, routes and timelines and all that sort of shenanigans there's one where you find a bunch of bombs uh you find a lady who dies it's all very messed up um you find out about this virus called radical six it's not that radical but it is it's it not is that a virus. radical it makes people go a little weird it makes cork go no i need to die like thirty thousand times me, kill me also makes alice stab herself a lot yeah Quite a few times. Yeah, so really that's annoying. that's the basic premise of this game. We're kind of go, we're gonna speed through this. We're not gonna go fully in depth with this, but uh, we mo- I think mostly we just kind of want to talk about the endings. Yes. Because <laughs> those are the the meat the real meat here of this I you were video say game. Meat potatoes again. I, I almost did, but I knew you would be like, Err. <laughs> you already said it once this podcast. <laughs> I know, and I was like, oh man, she's gonna be like, Err. <laughs> Err. Um. So I think kind of like one of the fir- the earliest ones you can get is the Dio ending. Mm-hmm. Or at least I feel like that is. Um, the Dio ending sees you, Dio, and Phi escape with nine points. Um, and you're able to go outside. You look up, there is a red sphere in the in the sky, and it looks like the moon. And they're like, they've been hearing about the uh, the eclipse. They're like, oh, look, it's this day because the eclipse is happening. Yep, wow. That's totally it. Mm-hmm. Um. So you go outside and all that. Uh, Dio tries to run off and all that sort of stuff. Phi is trying to get after him and all this. She knows a little bit more than she's leading on, and you're like, what? Also, you're in giant space suit, so you look all real goofy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dio tells you about how he is in a cult mm-hmm. called Free the Soul, and he's in like this specific grouping in the cult called the Mimurdians. Mimurdians? Mimurdian, whatever. Um, so it's a religious cult. Uh, it's based off of this one dude. They're all clones of this one dude. 
Was it left brother. or was it brother? Brother is the uh, is the leader. Left is who they are cloned after. Okay. I can never remember it. I can never keep the two of them. A family straight. can be a Dio. And, and a Dio. 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 Dio. <laughs> and another Dio. Yes, it's true. Um, so they learn about how he's a secret agent. He was basically, secret he came in. Agent man. <laughs> God, I can't. Can't. <laughs> Um, he was tasked to come in and kind of stop the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So he's that's what he is. His mission was. Um, so you learn all that. He's also had like this decoder thing that he's trying to use, but it's like one half of it, so you can't really use it at that point. Um, yeah. So he, he does all tells you all that, and then he takes you to a settlement. That's his ending. Uh, Clover's ending. Everyone dies. Everyone. She tells you about 999, and then literally everyone dies of Red Hole 6. <laughs> it's like, whoops. Well, great. Yay. Um, Kay's ending has him give you a bunch of backstory where he tells you he was raised inside of the facility you're in now by, these, by Zero Senior. And a lady. And a lady. And he was sad. Um, I love that art of like tiny baby K. And he's in like, a suit. Carry, carrying the bunny. Like, well, oh, I'm in this tiny baby suit. <laughs> uh, I forget who, which one's which. Okay, hold on. I, ha- I have a statement to say. Please, please give present your statement to the class. Um, if K did not have his suit, he would be a jello jiggler. I hate you. <laughs> this is what you call a callback. <laughs> you are a goof. This is this is what happens. It's true. I cannot believe. Jello jiggler. Anyway. The, the jello jiggler man. <laughs> um also um unrelated but k on that that rabbit machine is like still the greatest part of this he rides the he, there's a there's a room you go in called the rec room and there's like a toy rabbit like riding machine like a kind of like a carnival ride that you would find in front of like a department store they put 25 cents in it and it would just like move back and forth essentially mm-hmm. so he, he gets on that and he takes a picture and it's really good it's he fantastic like a little like anime like eyes at that point it's really good um, I don't remember what Alice's ending is. I think she just like she just oh she tells you that like like what her department and everything is kind of like gives you the backstory of like what her and Clover have been doing, mm-hmm. um, and discusses how her father had been kidnapped and all this sort of stuff by Dio's folks, all that sort of stuff. And that she she's trying to come and like stop them and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I get Quark and Miyogi's like confused because they're basically like you could. I feel like you could kind of like. For one of them, it's like either or could be the the ending here. Um, I think Tim Miyogi's is the root beer. Yeah. Ending. So Tim Miyogi's ending is basically you learn. Cork tells you all about his grandpa and how he gave him a root beer float one time, and that made him very happy. And how Cork was an orphan and fell out of a truck one time. But when he was a hurt. year old, and he also didn't get hurt. Tim Miyogi almost died trying to like find him one mm-hmm. night when they got into a fight. But one of the key things you find out in this is not the ruby or flow thing but that uh tenmi oji has been carrying around a picture with him this entire time and he's there's one point where you find him looking at it and he puts it away really quickly when mm-hmm. you're in this puzzle room though he puts it up to this uh facial um, recognition facial recognition thing and the facial recognition thing beeps for it and he's like okay uh you find out that the picture is a picture of young akane mm-hmm. and everyone and you're like Whoa. also this ending is where you learn about termites the termites it's a very important thing to learn about have you heard about termites i have two very important things to tell you one yo what's up with some termites <laughs> um, also i'm zero hey what's up it's me zero what's up i have a i have one eye oh. Arr, matey. <laughs> <laughs> i'm a walking pirate the plank. with the termites um, also, I think in one of the endings, it's not necessarily a full ending, I think, but maybe it's maybe K's, but you, you take K's mask off and it's you. Yep. And you're like, what? Uh, what's Quark's ending? What is Quark's ending? 
That's a great question. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to trying to pull it up. Quirky word. Uh, Luna's ending is that you learn she's a robot. Yep, and she cries and falls apart while she's talking to Sigma. You learn about robotic laws and all that sort of stuff. Oh, um, Quarks is the one where like Dio was like, "Hey, you gotta pick ally, or I'm gonna like break this this medicine." And then like you get injected and you break your arms off in the door. Yeah, because you have um, Robo arms. Yay! Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see what else. Uh, Quark appears. Thanks, Sigma. Decides the facility must be a shelter for the few remaining survivors. Might not be a bad place to stay after all, especially given potential need to repopulate the human race. He's like, Hell yeah, I'm gonna bone all these ladies. Oh my god. Um, Quark, uh, Alice person in the infirmary having a similar radical six fit, but now there's no ex. Excellent left to cure her. She begins to drive the scalpel towards her heart. Um, why is it the cork ending? Mm. That's weird. Um, I guess cork is like healed. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Phi's ending is kind of like where things really pop off mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, so eventually, you also find like a key card is on the old lady, mm -hmm. uh, and it has a a username and a password on it. The username is Kirashiki. The password is Jumpy Doll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, you find out that the old lady is Akane, and also Tenmyoji is Junpei. Obviously, um, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Although I kind of spoiled it earlier. It's true. Uh, you learn that Akane and Zero Senior created the AB project and all that sort of stuff. They made this entire game and everything, and they're using this game to to train Sigma and Phi to be able to jump their consciousnesses back and forth through time. Mm -hmm. So all of that happens. Um, basically, you have to create a Schrodinger's Cat situation where you jump back all the way to the beginning of the game and make sure Dio doesn't kill Akane. Mm-hmm. Because she has been just dying this entire time. It's like, eh. um, and basically, the reason they're doing the game is because they need this the da the element of danger to make sh make their bodies do all their jumping and all that sort of stuff. Also, they're all infected with radical six, and that's yep. supposed to help them as well. <laughs> it slows down everything. Yes. Man, that kick is so cool. She she kicks him in the head. It's real good. From the sky. Um. Following that, you learn that like there's a there's a grave mm -hmm. in the the butt garden, and Akane gives you a, a key that you put on your ankle for some reason. Uh, you everyone gets nine points at this point, and you're all about to leave, and you're like, "Oh right, I need to go find the the grave." Uh, you basically take the elevator to like the other floor, and like it opens up, and you're able to go back in and explore and everything. Um. You open up the 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 grave. And lo and behold, there's Akane in cold sleep. No, it's not Akane. Oh, right. It's it's uh it's you. Yeah, and then he's like, "Oh man, why he's is like, this here?" And why then is this like, guy oh, here? Do you recognize him? No, I've never seen this guy in my life. Um, <laughs> Akane steps out of steps out of the, the K suit, mm -hmm. and she's like, "I told you I'd be here." Yes, and then she's like, "Can everyone please just humor me and tell me, have you rec do you recognize the man in the the sleep pod?" And they're like, "Nope, nope, never seen him before in my life." And Sigma's like, "Uh, guys." What do you mean? I'm literally right here. And they're like, what are you talking about? And Akane's like, you should probably take a look at yourself. And you, you go take a look down and, oh, God, you're old and you have one eye. And, oh, man, you're zero senior. Yep. Yep. And you're still wearing your dumb outfit. And you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, he kind of freaks out. Which makes a lot of things makes things makes a lot of things make sense. In the context of this game, because there's a lot of clues you'll pick up when you're like replaying it, of like just people dogging on Sigma for him being old. Like yeah. I think there's one point. My where, favorite was the Alice one. Yeah, like Alice like dunks on him because like he's talking about how oh I'm getting my PhD right now, and she's like, yeah, this must be taking a real long time for you. 
which like I didn't even think about when I first played this game, but then going back through it with you, and she said that I was like, holy sh! It was right in front of me the whole time. Mm -hmm. I just didn't pick up on it because I was like, oh yeah, PhDs take a while. All right. Also, K is is Sigma's clone. His name's Kyle. He will never be brought up again in the series again. Never. It's really upsetting. It's Kyle really deserves better. Kyle deserves so much better. He and he gets a non-canon ending. Yeah. It's a real bummer. Kyle uh, deserves better. So but basically, he did, he did get like voice acting technically. He did, which is really weird. They, that's all they used Troy Baker. For. They used Troy Baker for that, and they used him for the OVA. Yeah, it's very weird. It's weird. Um, you learned about having to jump your consciousness from. Because you're in 2074, that's the the date this is taking place, all the way back to 2028 before everything goes down and you're trying to figure out a way to stop everything from going real bad. That's the whole, that was the goal of this entire project. Yep. Um, so you learn all that and everything. Uh, you get a you get a scene near the end where you you go back to 2028 and Akane has found you. Oh, and you have robot arms! Robot arms! And she's telling you about the, the whole, the plans and everything. How you already have Phi and you have to go to cold sleep and all this stuff. Um, you got to become like a master. At, like, yeah. You have to create everything. Cloning. Create these robots. Create cloning. Create the AB game all in the next like 50 years. She's like, good luck, dude. Have at it. And so let's see if we did it this time. <laughs> um, and then there's the non-canon ending where you run around as Kyle and talk to everyone and it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it's like a whole thing where, um, like, you're talking to Akane, and you're like, somebody else is in you right now. And they're like, uh, they? they're no, like, oh. we're not going to do that. Yeah. Um, Which so probably he, for the best. Yeah, he has said, and he's like, you know, I regret where that was placed on the timeline because it indicates that it's canon and that it's the true ending, but it's really not. Like, it mm. was just an alternate, which is why it says alternate end or something. But, um... But it's it's the last thing you see, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, so that's the quick and dirty version of Virtue's Last Reward. We did it. Um, basically, it's it's very much like, you know, you're kind of going through things for like the first three quarters, and then the last quarter is just like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Everything's happening. Your mind just trips and everything, and then you realize how basically how related it is to the first game, and everything, and it's. You're just like, what? It's really good. It's really good. I still think it's my fave. But also, I've only played 999 with the iOS version. <laughs> yeah, that makes a difference. I mean, it just cuts out the puzzles. You get the story. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but obviously, they had to make a sequel, Zero, Zero Time Dilemma. We'll talk about that at some point as well. Um, I reviewed that game. Mm-hmm. It's on the website, mm -hmm. which is a weird thing to think about. I, I forgot about that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that at some point. But yeah, Virtual Slash Reward, really good. Speed, speed, speed through of it. Nice. Thumbs up. We, we did it. Um, that's going to wrap this episode up because it's like 1130. Yeah, I'm a sleepy kid. And Al needs to go to bed. I do. <laughs> uh, so... If you'd like more from us, go to SeasonalAmbitCheckup.com or SAC.cool. It's where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like uh, the Seasonal Amateur Checkup and Jared Now Watch. Uh, you can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. Um, I put a new column up. Um, it talks about the unfortunate tragedy of Kyoto Animation. Mm -hmm. um, some some of my thoughts and feelings on that. And also, I, uh, I talked about a specific scene in their latest anime, Sarune. Uh, and the way that they utilize the uh, the original score for it and ways to basically manipulate how you're able to kind of get emotions from a specific scene, basically just like less than three minute scene that goes from just happy and jubilation to at the end of it, you're feeling just like heartbreak and despair. And it's it's inc it's an incredible use of their soundtrack. And I think it's it's kind of one of those things that, you know, we talk about Kyoto Animation being like this amazing studio in terms of their animation prowess and mm -hmm. how good they are at it but the way that they're also able to use like soundtracks and everything which is another part of production and everything like they are also very good at that and i think it's kind of something that we don't really talk about that often but like that scene in particular really just stuck out to me when i when i watched it like late last year early this year and i'd been meaning to write about it at some point and um 
unfortunately this was the thing that kind of brought it out but um, yeah my heart breaks for them um Same. but if you want to read that that is on the website as well uh we also kind of tweeted about it and gave our thoughts on that as well um if you want to follow Anne Ladium, go to anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. And you can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash anime checkup and support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S A C O V A. Uh next week we will do something. We'll see how the games go. We will see how the games go. We might have time to talk about one game mm-hmm. in particular. Maybe. Hopefully. But uh until then. Watch out for Judge Eyes. Well, and like Never mind, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. And no nerdy games. <laughs> uh, so, no. I... <sighs> <laughs> Don't be a jello jiggler. <laughs> Don't be a jello jiggler. Actually, you know what? Just be nice or else you will be banned from getting jello jigglers for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yep.